So in a naive sense, it's just finding augmenting paths. Every time you find one, increase the flow. Every time you do that, you get closer to the optimum. We're done. We're done. We're really done. Well, maybe not. Be a little careful. This example is, is classic. It's a very, very small network. It's only got four vertices in it. It's got a source, a sink, and two other vertices, A and B. And all the edges that go left to right, you're going to clear away, have huge capacity. Some value M. M is enormous. A million. A, a, I suggested maybe even a billion. But there's this one little rinky-dink pipeline that goes from A to B, and it has capacity 1. Okay, now let's solve this network iteratively, but every time we look for an augmenting path, we're going to take one which uses the maximum number of edges. So we initialize our computation by putting flow 0 on every edge. The value of the initial flow is 0. The flow on every edge is 0. Okay, now we're going to improve it. What's the longest augmenting path that you can find? The longest one goes from S to A, A to B, and B to T. The spare capacity on the edge SA, the first edge, it has flow 0, the capacity is M, so the spare capacity is M. Now, going across the middle from A to B, the flow on the edge is 0, the capacity is 1, so what's the spare capacity? 1. Now you go from B to T, the flow is 0, the spare capacity is M, so what's the tightest constraint? The tightest constraint is the 1. So what you do is you increase the flow by 1 on all the three of those edges. So now you should see one unit going like this, like this, and like that. Are you with me? Your updated flow has value 1. And now you look for augmenting paths, but I want one which has the maximum number of edges. All right, I'm not redrawing the network, but do you see it? The maximum length augmenting path goes forward with spare capacity M, backwards with excess capacity, excess flow 1, forward with spare capacity M. So, you increase by 1, you decrease by 1, you increase by 1, and now your new flow has 1 and 1 and 1 and 1. Value 2. Again, you look for the longest augmenting path. Now you can increase, increase, increase. So, it goes back and forth and back and forth. You put one on, take one off, put one on, take one off through that middle edge. You get to the optimum answer, but you get there in two billion steps. But even a UGA student could solve this problem. They would just look at it and say, the optimum is two billion. Put one billion over the top and one billion under the bottom, don't use that little rinky-dink pipeline in the middle at all. All right. So this simple example suggests to us that there may be some advantage to using augmenting paths which have few edges in contrast to ones which have many edges. So what we're going to do is develop an algorithm which has a primal dual flavor. The primal problem is the network flow problem, and that will be solved iteratively. 
The dual problem will be an instance of Dijkstra. We will be trying to find a shortest path problem that we will solve completely each time. But the graph on which we are finding shortest paths keeps changing. 